Happy Halloween, everyone! Glad you could join me for my first riff, the 1959 classic, The Bat, with Vincent Price as Agnes Moorhead as Endora. Way over, what are you doing in this movie? Ooh, it's gonna be a swinging murder. The Bat's gonna kill for kicks and pick up chicks. Sounds like an episode of Dragnet's about to start soon. Wilbur. This is the Oaks, a house in the country which I rented for the summer. It's on the upper Haunted Hill author, section of the country. I write tales of mystery and murder. But the things that happened in this house were far more fantastic than any story I've ever had published. Most people can't even I make it through a quarter of my books without falling into a coma. Apartment. And my maid Lizzie Allen, who had been with me nearly 20 years. Lizzie! Right here behind the door, waiting on your beck and call as always. It's out the door. Look, Miss hmm? Cornelia, them servants you brought from the apartment are talking about walking out on us. They're all members of the really? Darren Stevens fan club. I know they don't like it here, but I didn't uh, think it was that bad. Because they've been hearing things about the killer that the police call the Bat, and the murders that he committed here this past winter. They say the Bat can't even kill a joke. that he's back again. Oh, well, how can they be sure of that? Has he committed another crime? No, not yet, but that ain't saying that he won't. Here's something else. You've heard about the bats they have here. Animal bats, the kind that fly. Not yes. the kind that fight crime in spandex. This, magazine. this is a report from the state health department, and it says some of them bats is rabid. Well. And that ain't all. Now there's a rumor going around that it was the bat himself, the killer, I mean, that released the rabid bats in this neighborhood. Oh, he was probably just trying to lure out Rank Casey. Well, the housekeeper, the cook, the butler, and the upstairs maid don't think so. Neither does the little I boy who lives down the lane. If hysterical nonsense like that can scare them out of their good jobs, it's their loss, not mine. You say that it's now, like but you're begging for them the when you're trying to make your own breakfast for six hours. I drive directly to Zenith Bank, Warner. I want to foreclose some more properties in Kingston Falls. I'll get you there, Miss Van Gorder. Drive me to the bank, drive me to the bank. I should have stayed with Miss Havisham. She never left her place. Thanks again. Miss Van Gorder. How's little Jack Horner? Hey. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You remember Lizzie Allen? Of course. Hello, Miss Allen. Still barren, I see. So you're spending the summer with us again? Yes, yes. I've leased the Oaks, the home of your bank president, John Fleming. I heard you had. I was surprised. Why? Is there something the matter with it? No. Nothing more than the usual elevator of blood and the twin ghost girls. Oh? Well, I rented it from his nephew, Mark Fleming, who has the real estate office here. He said his uncle would be gone the entire summer. Well, that's right. Mr. Fleming's in the North Woods now with his physician, Dr. Wells. Oh, pardon me. Dale, I want you to meet my wife. We were married at Christmas time. That must have been nice. Keeps remembering our anniversary oh, nice and easy. Uh, my wife, Miss Van Gorder, Miss Allen. How do you do, Miss How Bailey? do you do? <laughs> Cornelia Van Gorder. Jack's still in his corner? Well, I've read every murder mystery you've ever written. Didn't care I for him. I just em. adored that weird one, the private morgue of Dr. X. Even though it gave me the shivers. <laughs> Only the shivers? Scared hell out of me. Oh. I've hardly any hell left. Well, I, I, I really mean that uh, Miss Corny killed them off in that one. When you refer to my books, please don't call me Miss Corny. I prefer Welcome Miss Mr. Warty. Mr. Hines is here to see you. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. Gotta go tend to the Germans. No, oh, no, we won't. Oh, so you're a bride. Well, not quite. <laughs> not oh? It's just in the bedroom? No, I'm sure I've seen you. Well, I uh, I used to be my husband's secretary. Here Married my way into promotion. Of course I remember. Ladies. May I welcome our most distinguished visitor back to Zenith? Oh, that's very charming, but... Um, 
Lieutenant Anderson. Anderson, that's me. Lieutenant Anderson, of course. Chief of Detectives of the Zenith Police Department. This is Miss Allen. Miss Allen. How do you do? Lieutenant Anderson is one of our favorite citizens. He's He's also my side dish when my husband's out of town. Not bad for a policeman. You must have made a good thing of it. (laughs) Well, I saved my money, if that's what you mean. It's near closing time, and I've got some business in the safe deposit vault. Uh, uh, Please come and see me, Mrs. Bailey. Oh, I'd love to. And you, Lieutenant. Goodbye. Well, so long, Lucy. So long, Ethel. My, what a charming woman. She moved into the Oaks just the other day. Oh, <laughs> Professor Oak could use a new assistant. Is setting for a writer of mysteries. Oh, it certainly is. <laughs> oh, boy, things did not go well with the Germans. Come in here, both of you. Andy, we're in trouble. Wendell Hines came in to pick up $350,000 worth of bonds that we were holding as collateral for a loan. They were kept in our special vault. Vault 76. Mr. and I are the only officers of the bank who have access to that vault. So, the Heinz bonds are gone. That's not all. Other negotiable securities are missing. From what I can gather short of a careful check, the bank has been looted of over a million dollars worth of securities. That money was supposed to be sent to pay off Dr. Evil. I wish I could talk to him. Unfortunately, he and Dr. Wells are deep in the woods. They can't be reached by phone. Meanwhile, in beautiful Vermont, the most butch Vincent Price has ever looked. What is it? Seems to be a forest out there. How the hell did we get here? I thought I heard someone on the path coming from the lake. Had an idea it might be that guide of ours. Oh, Sam won't show up until morning. It's a 20-mile canoe trip from here to civilization. And it's about 10 minutes by car, though. Well, Don't know why he insists Sam on canoeing here. For me. I thought you told him at the bank not to bother you. I did. But they'll bother me. Doctor. I got a bad Mr. case of loving you. What would you do for half a million? Well, I'd eat that Klondike bar Anything for starters. Short of murder. Why not murder? Too messy. Too great a risk? For half a million? Yes. I pinched a million from the bank. Then I squeezed the Charmin because I felt I'm frisky. Not I embezzled it. Not that I think you wouldn't do it if you thought you could get away with it. Escape those meddling kids and that I dog, too. I'm not talking about currency. I took negotiable securities that could be converted into cash. I have the cash. In tens, twenties, and hundreds. Lots of singles, too, because I love to make it rain. Lawyer, why tell me this? You'll find out why. Who's going to take the blame for the robbery? Bailey, the cashier. They'll never suspect me. I like Bailey. Well, so do I. I love the guy. That's why he's the fall guy. He has a lovely little wife. Uh, charming girl. Was the best man. Where's the million? In my family's tomb in Zenith. In the crypt with my father's casket. I don't buy that, John. You told me a fabricated story that wouldn't convince a child. No. You forget that I had you in charge when you were a very sick man. When you raved in delirium. When you kept claiming that Suicide Squad was the greatest movie ever. Hidden room. Now, where else could you put a hidden room except in that mansion you built? That uh, white elephant you call the Oaks. Look. Everyone knows I have a bad heart. Ah, that's where I kept my gun. Now, who would doubt it if you wired the bank directors that my heart had failed, that I had fallen from a great height here in the woods, and that I was badly smashed up? You could uh, ship the body back for burial and uh, instruct them not to open the casket due to the condition of its contents. Make sure that the contents well, had been shifted. Of course, that uh, we'd have to have a body to put in that casket, which means that we'd have to deal with an undertaker at this end. Luckily for you, I played an undertaker in a different Where'd film. Where'd we get a body? Couldn't we provide one of our own? I thought we'd fashion one oh, out of Sam. silly putty and shoestring potatoes. Sam, our guide. Sam weighs about as much as I do. He's practically a hermit. He wouldn't be missed for a long time. Or ever, considering his bizarre funk. The local undertaker would know him. Not if we made him look as if he'd been in a serious accident. But if Bailey's going to take the blame, why do you have to do this? 
A jury might acquit him. In that case, I'd be a logical suspect. I could disappear, of course, but... But I'm saving that trick for Vegas. I think I'm dead. Oh, Smokey the Bear burst into flames! What if I don't go for this deal? In that case, it would be too bad. Blam! Ah, my dingus! You mean you'd kill me? What else could I do? Now that I've told you about the million, I'd say you were shot in a hunting accident. Dick Cheney would back me I'll up. Look, doctor, if you can find another body instead of Sam's, it's all right with me. There's half a million in it for you. I'll do my best. I smell smoke. So do I. What's that noise? Oh, no. It's the spruce bark no, beetles. Doctor. They're out of the gun. The woods are on fire. It's coming this way. We've got to get out of here. Out the back way. We will. As soon as I provide that body we were talking about. Price check on dead big president. Meanwhile, at Stately Wayne Manor... This game would be much more interesting on a computer. Oh my goodness, dear. Lizzie, is that you? Yes, Miss Cornelia. There's a storm coming up and it's gonna be a snorter. I feel it in my rickety bones. Well, that noise blew my game higher than a kite. I think I've lost some of the cards. Oh, I'll get them for you. Just like how I do everything else around here, you old bent. What was that? Scooting by on his bicycle, just chucked it into a couple bushes and let it go at that. For land's sake. Mr. Vic Bailey's been arrested. Oh? He wasn't allowed to pass go, nor could he collect his $200. Victor Bailey, vice president and cashier of the Zenith Bank, was arraigned before United States Commissioner Alvin Fielding, charged with the embezzlement of over a million dollars. I can't believe Vic Bailey had anything to do with that robbery. Durwood, on the other hand. Oh, well, I see our landlord is home again. Landlord? Mr. Fleming. Dr. Malcolm Wells is back in town with the body of John Fleming, president of the Zenith Bank, who was killed in a forest fire. He was innocently Mr. taking a Fleming stroll when the fire pulled out a gun and shot him. Family's tomb on Friday. And I hope he stays there. Well, why shouldn't he? Well, this is his house. And ghosts Ever still demand mortgage died, payments. Some funny things have happened here. For instance? The housekeeper, the cook, and the butler said that they heard strange noises at night. And the upstairs maid swore that she met a man without a face coming up the back stairs. Oh, so that's why they quit and left me to run this place without a staff. No, they quit they because you keep insisting you on showing them your photos of you and B. Arthur they nude. Were scared to stay. But you are still here, Lizzie. Haven't you seen anything? No. No, and even if I had, I ain't afraid of ghosts. They're afraid of me. Just like every man I've ever met. A spiritualist told me once that ghosts was allergic to me. It's because they smell like cilantro. But, but this bat feller they keep talking about in the paper, I, I guess he'd be different. No, I don't think you'd have the same effect on you him. You might be just the gal to turn him around. Oh, dear. What are they trying to do? Drive people away from this part of the country? Why, what does it say about the bat? Says he's gone through about a dozen robins. Specialty seems to be killing women. My goodness, two of them in one night. All his victims died the same way, like their throats had been ripped open with steel claws. Ah, carotene accident. That's a charming little caper. I'll have to try it sometime. You best sleep with one eye open, Lizzie. In a book. Nothing, just something bumping against the house. At least something's banging around here. That's just the wind banging a door. Pay no attention. To <laughs> That's just the chainsaw slowly rubbing up and the front door being kicked One in. Of his victims who lived for a moment after she was found described the bat as a man without a face. 
honest, Miss Corny. I think that woman must have been exaggerating. You know, before she died in blood-soaked horror, that is. It's just that heavy tapestry at the top of the stairs. I know, I know. I've heard it before on a windy night. Heard it that night we had tacos, too. But that sounds as if there was someone on the stairs. I know there isn't. At least there shouldn't be. Them's just the noises you hear in any old house on a windy night. It says here that the bat never leaves no fingerprints. Leaves a fresh scent of pine, too. Having no face, he probably has no fingers, either. Lizzie! It's that damn garage band next door again with their experimental music. And that, I suppose, is the cat dropping its dentures. How and why would your cat have dentures? No, I don't think so. I think it's something should be looked into. Now who chucked him down here? Arthur, he's supposed to be guarding the upper floors. There must be a window open up there. No, Lizzie. Let him lay. Let him sleep it off. I swear, you can't rely on the night of the round these days. Signs don't go down, put the lights out. We'll check the windows in the living room and draw the curtains, and then we'll go to bed. Yes, please. Okay, but no pillow fights tonight. I won't be a minute. Ah, hello there, thing. Off. I forgot to turn it on again. Not that I've ever successfully he turned anything him. on. He was coming in. He might have got you. Oh, but he didn't, and he's still out there, thanks to you. He now scared you away another man. That's me. my Lizzie. No, no. I won't leave you, Miss Corny. Are you okay? Yes, ma'am. I'm... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Operator, give me the police department, please. Zenith Police Department. This is Cornelia Van Gorder. From the house I'm in the corner. We know about that, Miss Van Gorder. Just a hey, uh, hello, ladies. A I'm here checking the meter. No need to be frightened of me. You're not alone there, are you? What about your servants? Well, I have none except uh, my chauffeur, and he's away. He won't be back until the morning. Bums out drinking and again. Two of us here tonight, and we're going to lock ourselves in my room. Now, uh, if, if any of your men... What's with the hand anything, gestures? Is she turning Italian? I'll send officers over there right away. Oh, well, thank you very much. Come on, Lizzie. We're going to sleep in my room. Meanwhile, in Miss Cornelia's room... Well, nothing can get at us in this... Well, so long as I hold it closed on that, you can't get in. Good and solid. Mm, like the door to a tomb. Glad I got this handy burglar's kit from that helpful drunken robot. Uh, I think that couch will be comfortable. There's some extra bedding, you know. Yes, closet. Let's see now. Maybe you should put furniture in front of the door? Or... Ah! I see you're using the chair. And, uh, what? Wait, what, what are you doing? Uh, uh, huh? No bolt. Well, that's not so good. Well, what's that for? That, my good woman, is a booby trap. If this falls over, we'll run out, show him our boobies, and he'll run screaming into the night. And we'll hear it fall. Sir, I think you should really consider a manicure. Ugh. It is I, the bat, with my keen senses and reflexes. I'll tree out up these stairs. 
I forgot my night things, my robe, my gown, and my slippers. I'll go get them now. now wait a minute, Liz. You're gonna walk out and die for I'll a toothbrush. You. Now, don't you bother, Miss Cornelia. My room's just down. Lizzie, I told you. To oh boy, here they come. Keep it together. It's all right. I'll only be a second. Hitchcock! <laughs> Damn, I am bad at this. Yes? Miss Van Gorder? Yes? Zenith Police Department. There's a police car just outside your house, and the officers in it have reported that there's no sign of a prowler anywhere on the grounds. But they did, however, find a number of now. dead servants She's in the lawn. Oh, just outside my bedroom. Have your men break through the kitchen door and search this place from top to bottom. Okay, Miss Van Gorder. Sit tight. I will. I have a gun, and I know how to use it. That's too much for this bat. I'm out of here. Oh, relax. Relax, Lizzie. The police did a good job. They couldn't find anybody in here. But we both saw him, Miss Cornelia. All right, all right, so he got away. Just like every man's ever gotten away from you. Outside, so just try and get some rest. There's nothing can get at us here. Famous last words. Let's see them handle this toy rubber bat. <laughs> Got you now, human. It's the wind up and dive bomb. Miss ah! oh, 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 oh. Carnegie. I've had another Miss naughty Carnegie. dream. You've had a nightmare. Maybe I did. But there was a bat in and it, and it bit me. What? And it flew in that closet. Oh, good gracious, Lizzie. You're right. Oh. 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 The only thing holding up that nightgown is the collective will of the audience. Operator, operator, will you get me Dr. Malcolm Wells' oh. office, please? No, I don't know and look, I don't care what Malcolm is in the middle of. Can you connect me with his office, please? Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm going to get the rabies. Hello? Hello? Uh, I'm Dr. foaming up. I can feel it. <laughs> at the moment. But if you'll give me your name and number, I'll try to locate him. Well, this is Miss Van Gorder of the Oaks. And you I better damn Mr. well Mr. listen to me because I'm rich and I shot a lot. As soon as possible. And I was told that Dr. Wells was the nearest physician. I'll try to find him for you. And if I can't, I'll send you another doctor. Oh, well, thank you very much. Oh, he's out on a case. Oh, oh I hope it's not a delivery. A baby, I mean, they can be terribly complicated. It never bothered me none. Oh, Lizzie, you never had a baby. Of course I didn't. That's why they never bothered me. Oh, does it wham, 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 wham. Meanwhile, at Gloomy Acres Cemetery... Oh, man. What scene was I supposed to be in again? I am so lost. Hey there, car. You're not looking too well. Oh, yeah, you're running a fever. Oh, let's get this car to a hospital. Oh, look at that. Would you just look at that? His weather stripping is shot. He's gonna get ants for sure. Yep, lost another patient. Mmm, live bats are the best. Come on. Come on, get on get on there. Why don't you fit on the tray, buddy? No! Now give me a Dr. Well? Are you there, Dr. Wells? Guess I'll save you for later, my little friend. Are you there, Dr. Wells? This is the operator. Your call service is on the wire. It's an emergency. 
Ah, Pierce, I'm pregnant. This is Dr. Wells. This is your call service, Doctor. Oh, hello. I, I was just doing an experiment. I left the receiver off. That's what I thought, but I kept trying. Miss Van Gorder at the Oaks called and said that her maid had been bitten by a bat. And she's afraid it might be rabid. What? Well, why, oh, why right. didn't you uh, tell me that sooner? <laughs> Oh boy. I can't let him see me. I haven't paid my last bill yet. Fred Mertz, nut dick. Just look at all the junk he keeps lying around. Oh, it's terrible. So tacky. What does that smell? Huh, nothing suspicious about that. Let's see, heads in jars, eyeballs in jars. A Chinese knockoff bat symbol! Foxy lady. Who's there? It's Dr. the plumber. Come in. Good evening. Oh, I'm so glad they found you, Doctor. Well, I reached my office shortly after you called. How is your maid? Tell me is all the excruciating no, details. No, she seem to be. <laughs> Did the bat get away? No, I, I believe it's still in my bedroom. Oh, good. I want to examine it. Now, there you go, Miss Allen. Now you'll feel better. Doctor, have I got the rabies? Well, well it's a nine-month incubation period. Brain under a microscope. That thing's got a brain? Oh, you'd be surprised. Look at Congress, Where for example. It? I think the little darling is in that closet. Oh. You know, it's a pity you leased this house, Miss Van Gogh. Don't mind that I'm putting on the same gloves I was well, handling a bat and squirting his saliva all oh. over. Well, after tonight, nothing can lie me. Yes, I understand. It must have been terrifying. So many unexplainable things have happened here. There's something about the place. Your servants must have sensed it when they walked out on you. An apprehension of disaster. Turns me on. Huh? Let's see. Aha! Yes. There he is. All right, now. Take it easy. Nobody's going to hurt you. Quiet now. Quiet. What's that bag? You're telling me to charge them triple for the house call? He looks quite normal, doesn't seem to be sick at all. But what do I know? It's not like I'm a doctor or anything. Nice. I've been worried about him. Well, you should be. From his appearance, I'd say that he doesn't have any infection. In which case, you've had a narrow escape. Now, you take one of those tablets I left for you, and I'll guarantee you a good night. And I'll drop in on you tomorrow. Oh, thanks for everything, Doctor. Well, all I did was give you a title and I'll no charge you up the A. Oh, I know you can, but do let me help you. Oh, don't forget that once I'm gone, you'll have to climb those stairs alone. Oh, I'm all right. I'm armed now. Can you uh, shoot one of those things without shutting your eyes? Oh, Hit doctor, the broad side of a barn just the other day? Ever written. I don't write about things I'm unfamiliar with. <laughs> like men, for instance. Well, Not that Lizzie would nice. know. Good night, Doctor. Accident? No, no, the wind blew him down. Funny how I didn't I notice that on my way upstairs. Did you know that young Mark Fleming leased you this house without notifying his uncle? No, no, I didn't. Well, it doesn't matter now. John Fleming is dead and Mark's his heir. But if John were alive, he would warn you to leave here, Miss Van Gorder. Really? Yes. It's been a tragic place for anyone who ever lived in it. Property taxes caused him to go into a suicidal frenzy. Who's out there? Nobody you need worry about, Doctor. Oh, it's Andy. And I'm feeling randy. Good evening, Miss Van Gorder. Good evening, Lieutenant. Is somebody sick here? Uh, my maid was bitten by a bat. Oh? 
A rabbit bat? Well, I'll know for sure when I get to my lab. I, I caught the bat. Oh, I guess the case is closed then. Dog. Thanks, Doc. In my bedroom. Yes. How to get in? Well, there are many ways a bat could get in a house. You ought to know. Not that I'm accusing you of I, anything. Uh, I spotted this hole in the window the minute I got here. Why? That's where the two-legged bat got your door open. Damn superheroes think they're above the law. Miss Van Gorda told me that she uh, phoned headquarters at Zenith. Yes, I phoned twice. The second time was after the prowler got in the house. Weren't you at headquarters, Andy? No, no I was at a brothel. I mean, yes. They came and searched the house from top to bottom, but they couldn't find the bat. You, you better have this window fixed tomorrow. Oh, yes, I certainly shall. Yes, no, I, I'd better be going. I, I'm due in surgery at 8 o'clock in the morning. Good He's going to use the same gloves from tonight, there too. There will be a man patrolling the grounds all night, Miss Van Gorda. Oh, thank you. And nobody inside, Andy? Why should there be? Well, how do you know but what the bat is hiding somewhere in the house? I'm quite sure he isn't in the house, Doctor. Not now. W wait, uh, are you the bat? I thought I was the bat. Maybe we're both the bat. Ooh. That was the oddest conversation I've ever had with men in my life. Oh boy, you seem to have stumbled onto another weird set. Hey, what's this? Alright, I can use some wet paint. Hi, Andy. How's Opie? Oh, well, congratulations. Real estate business must be big enough. New office, new furniture, new deal. Yeah, a lot of like new empty houses since everyone's forced to vacate Kingston Falls. Are you squandering your inheritance? Oh, I haven't got it yet. Well, the paper says John Fleming left his entire fortune to you. Funny thing about that entire fortune is that we can't find it. No kidding. Oh, all Uncle John had in his bank account was a couple of hundred dollars. That and a few thin and mints and a sack of marbles. If we don't find that missing million, mine will be empty, too. How come? Hookers, gambling, oh, usual M.O. invested in Zenith Bank stock. The examiners won't certify the bank is solvent until those stolen securities are found. So the stockholders have voted an assessment that will wipe some of us out. It's a sense those securities have been converted into cash. And if I can't find that cash, I'm sunk. Well, where are you going to look for it, Andy? Well, I'd start by You're looking under the ashtray. Your uncle wouldn't take a million on a hunting trip, would he? You suspect Uncle John? Why, Andy, he founded the Zenith Bank. That'd be like robbing the family tomb. You think he wouldn't? Well, well he's been known to rob the besides, cradle. Vic Bailey's fingerprints are all over the vault. Now, they didn't find any of Uncle John's fingerprints. Because he wiped them off. Can the defense prove that? They'll try to. Judy Hollander, Bailey's secretary, is a defense witness. God, I'm grizzled. They believe her testimony will have a powerful effect on the jury. Oh, well, she has a powerful effect on me. Judy's a doll. And I hope she's the kind that wets herself. Here's the book you mentioned, Judy. It's your newest one. Yes, it's just been published. You can have that copy if you wish. Oh, it's a first edition and you've signed it. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. I'm going to use this to level out my dining room table. Uh, may I serve tea now, Miss Van Gorda? Yes, please do, Warner. Thank you. Well, I see you've engaged new servants. Well, yes, someone's got to cook a damn meal I around here. them to live in this house. Well, Jane Patterson, my new housekeeper, knows this house better than you do, Doctor. Huh? She worked for John Fleming. And Warner was my chauffeur. Chauffeur turned butler? <laughs> They'll promote anybody <laughs> these days. Say any part at a moment's notice is... Uh, did you, uh, did you get a plumber, Warner? Well, we look at the tight in on days, Warner. Sir. What about that leaking pipe? The basement will be flooded in three days. Well, the pipe is no longer leaking. You mean it's dried up of its own accord? No, not quite. I packed the elbow where the water was coming out. Well, I hope he can Packed's fix my leaking pipe, if you know what I mean. Thank you, madam. <laughs> now, there's a character. How long did you say that he worked for you as chauffeur? About three months. Well, I hope he doesn't have a police record. Odd thing to bring up, I know. My dear Dale, it may interest you to know that the last night of his life, John Fleming told me that he loved your husband like a son. Of course, he cut his own if son Fleming out of his inheritance. If today, he would be fighting to prove Vic's innocence. Could Mr. Fleming prove his own innocence? Miss Van Gorda, can there be any doubt about it? There will be when Miss Hollander testifies at Vic's trial. Oh? 
you know something that we haven't heard yet, Judy? Doubtful. Judy doesn't something seem like the I brightest saw egg. With my own eyes. She's not permitted to say what it was. My dear girl, I wouldn't think of asking her. No, I was thinking about <laughs> screaming it out of her. moment that Fleming did steal the million. Now, what would he do about it? Where is it? I think I got some, some new hairs growing in here. Ugh. Without getting caught in the act. Now, if I was writing this, instead of living in the middle of it, I'd hide it right here in this spooky old house. Under a loose floorboard or up a chimney? <laughs> no, not the chimney. Kay Berringer's dad if is still Mr. stuck Fleming in there. had the nerve to steal a million, he'd make his plans well in advance. I'd say he'd prepare a place to hide it. Possibly when this house was being built. Now, I rented this place for Mark Fleming, his nephew. I wonder... I wonder if he'd have the floor plans. I'll ask him. Well, I'm glad you volunteered. Yes. Not just anyone Maybe. can ask Mark Will Fleming for the floor plans. The oh, you ask him now. Okay. His number is Summit... Uh, is it Summit 7537? Say, Lizzie, Thank are you, you Lizzie. okay from last night? Ah, <laughs> oh, she's fine. Not bad, eh, Andy? Biggest catfish I ever done caught. The hell is that? Never heard that before. Mark Fleming speaking. Why, yes, I am interested in changing my long distance service. Well, hang on a minute, honey, while I see if I have him. It's Dale Bailey, all excited. Miss Van Gorder wants to know if I have the floor plans of the Oaks. Now, what would she want with the floor plans? Well, she suggested to me that your uncle might have hidden the bank loot there. Ain't no big thing to worry about that, boy. Somewhere in the house itself. Wait a minute, there is a place where Uncle Johnny might have kept those blueprints. Probably in his porcelain doll what collection place? room. Well, I heard him talk about it a good many years ago. I can't be sure of the exact location. Anyway, I don't think the old boy had the guts to steal a million. But if I find those plans, I'll let you know, Andy. Because I trust you implicitly. Hello, Dale. Look, honey, I haven't seen those plans since I was a kid, but I'll come over tonight and maybe we can find them. Thank you, Mark. We'll expect you. He seems to think they're here in the house somewhere. He's coming over tonight. Well, that's good. Dale and Judy are my house guests for the weekend. Uh, would you like to have dinner with us tonight? Well, tempting as it is to stay for a weekend-long murder session. You know, if Judy's testimony is going to clear Vic Bailey and implicate John Fleming, others may get the idea that there's buried treasure in this house. And they're also Don't probably think there'll be pirate ghosts guarding it. You're actually on the stand. Oh, I won't. That's a smart girl, Judy. And a very lovely girl. Well, mm -hmm. good afternoon, ladies. <laughs> Goodbye, Doctor. Doctor. Come on, girls, let's go. Well, now I'm lost wandering around the set. Doesn't that beat all? Well, I know a few of them are getting on an age, but I just can't resist a peekaboo slumber party. Now, wait a minute. This doesn't seem like the house that I, Mock Fleming, dwell in. Oh man, I bet they're clipping coupons in there. Weren't you your husband's secretary, Dale? Yes, I was. Do you take shorthand? Mm -hmm. Well, I prefer dictation. Well, my dear, if you'd like to have your mind occupied, then you can help me with today's junior I want jumble. You to work with me while I write the story of this fantastic criminal, the Bat. This is a really nice grandfather clock. That seems to put on wheels. Don't know why they do that. Huh. Let's see if I can jam my car keys in here. It's a Bugs Bunny cartoon! Dun, 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 dun. Finally, the hidden linen closet. All oh, right, Uncle's plans for the Batcave. Cookie. Bat. 
Cha-cha! Oh, that was something. I'm gonna be passing that hard in about an hour. It's really hard. Good dinner, Lizzie. As usual. Wonderful. Oh, Lizzie, you what a lovely piece of silver. It's an original, isn't it? Yes, they still use them in England. All right. I got the secret planes of the Batcave. I'm going to hang it up next to my original planes of the Starship Enterprise in the bottle city of Candor. Your sausages, your scrambled eggs. Interesting. Sir. Huh. What's this do? Oh, it emits invisible magic. Ugh. It's like she never dusts the place. struck the hour in the last ten years, if I'm to believe what Mark Fleming told me. Why is it angled away from the wall like that? Ah, because of that feng shui nonsense. Busy, very likely when she was dusting. Wait a minute. Did you know there's a door in this panel? No, no, I didn't. Oh, my gracious, so there is. Maybe it opens to a secret passage. Oh, maybe it leads to the conservatory. Who knows, girl? Maybe there's a lot of bonbons and house slippers in there. There always is. Yes, it moves. Chin up, girls. I think I'm a damn good Calling William Frawley impersonator. Calling car 11. Proceed to the Oaks and Zenith Township immediately. A homicide has been reported. Okay. Proceeding to the Oaks. And tell that damn ass catch him to stay the hell out of there. Tell him to come to the Oaks at once. Ugh, yeah, thanks. I'm gonna need to cover that up. Ugh. Horrible. As if his throat has been torn by some creature with fangs or claws. Or... That's his sign. Sagittarius. We found it on the others he killed. I'd hoped those reports that he was up to his old tricks again were pure imagination, but apparently they're based on fact. He's come back. Back again. Back to the Daddy's back. Skills. Call a friend. Yes, that's who I mean. That's who did this. The bat. We need to inform Commissioner Gordon immediately. Who Mark? We all did. And his Dale and Judy and I. Lizzie was in the dining room. This is my new housekeeper, Jane Patterson. You know, she worked for John Fleming. Great I grandfather. I mean, jeez, how old is she? In the kitchen, cleaning up. I cooked the dinner tonight. Did you know that the secret closet was here? Did you know there was fresh yeah. towels in there the whole she time? behind the grandfather's clock. Well, it was I who found it, really. Oh, sure, take all the credit. The clock had been moved and the door wasn't quite closed. I'll get it. What do you say, girl? Should we jump him? No, you again. Don't we have anybody else in this town? Who is it? What's this? You guys got me a corpse? I didn't get you anything. Mark Fleming. Hmm. This coroner, you saw the same wounds on the others. How long's he been dead? Oh, I'd say about a half an hour. I can tell this by looking at the throw rug. The That's a batch trademark. Perhaps he's still in the house. That's possible. You coming on to me? Why should he be? Because he's looking for something, and like you, he believes it's here. And like and you, he has an insatiable hunger for Twizzlers. I would advise you to get out of this house as quickly as possible, notwithstanding our expert police protection. God, you suck at your Have job. You the morgue? They're on their way here. Oh, good. I want to examine the body before they get here. Uh, may we take it into another room? Yes, yes you may take it. It's not like he was a friend of anybody or anything. Oh, Warner, where have you been? Up in the water tower with Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. Has there been an accident? There's been a murder. Oh, that makes five this week. Mark Fleming, the young man from whom I leased this place, was killed here tonight. They know who did it? Well, they they believe it was the bat. Wait, I'm I sorry. thought that was the bat. the front door, Miss Van Gorder. But I forgot my keys, and when I rang the bell at the kitchen door, there was no response. Oh, uh, this is Warner, Lieutenant. He's my butler. He was my chauffeur. 
Why did you promote him? Because he is a lousy driver. They don't like service in the country. Have you been a butler before? I've served in many capacities, sir, but this was my night off and I forgot my keys. I heard that part. I'm more interested in what you what were wearing you when you left. Night? Oh, about 6.30, I had dinner at Wiley's Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. Can you prove where you spent the rest of the evening? I can try. Try hard. Oh, don't act like you don't I'll frequent the, the same brothel as I do. Very good, sir. I shall be in my room, Miss Van Gorder, if you need me. Yes, Warner. Surely you don't think he's... I mean, just because he's the butler? Warner Isn't that too on the nose? Before. I can't recall where or when. But I will. Thinking it was freshman year at Clown College. Damn finest bozo impersonator I ever met. There'll be a crew here shortly from headquarters. Dusting for fingerprints, taking photographs. Why don't you all pose for some photographs? Let's get all unclothed now. Mrs. Patterson, you aren't leaving the house tonight, are you? No, Lieutenant. Don't. I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Miss Patterson. Dale, I was with Mark Fleming this afternoon when you talked to him about the floor plans of this house. I heard him tell you he was coming here tonight. Of course, she tells me far too much about his personal place. life. She told me he was coming. Who else should I tell you that? Judy, Lizzie. Popeye, Mappy, nice Mark Spitz, Dr. Uncle Wills. Arthur, Don Ho, Dr. Carrot Wills. Top. There are few killers who kill for the fun of it. Most people kill for business. That very likely is a mental case, and I'm convinced that his crimes are motivated by his mania for personal gain. There's a million dollars at large. And he's going to keep on hunting for it until he lays his hands on it. His silky gloved oh, metal tipped hands. Yes, I mean, I can only assume that that's what he wears. Well, Not saying in the bat or anything. We'll be busy for a while, so I'd suggest that, that you... we go to our rooms. That's a very good idea. Come on, girls. Mm -hmm. What about a police guard for this house tonight, Lieutenant? You've got one. We got you Michael Winslow from the Police Academy the movies. The when the bat comes in, he'll make if a bunch of crazy noises call, and wake you all up. Surprise for him. Who, uh, who is he? Have you any idea? Well, I thought it might be you, but you're standing here in front of me. He could be anybody. He could so even far, be me. Again, not a confession. confession. Nothing we could take before a jury. I'm afraid we must look higher than the criminal world. He may be a merchant, lawyer, doctor, scientist. One of the pillars of his community. Have you considered it might be your gynecologist? Ladies. Lock your doors tonight. Stay behind me. I promise you, you'll be safe. Good night. Good night, you did. Hi, it's me, Cherub on the clock. When the clock strikes twelve, your souls are mine. Huh, what's that? I think that's my scene down there. What am I doing up here? Hello, hello, hello. Goodbye. All right, we'll just bring the buffet table back, I suppose. Poor Mark. Yeah, it's a pity. So young. So ripe, so firm, so fully well, packed. Doctor, do you agree it was the bat? In my report, I shall say the death was caused by the same technique used in the other killings. A paralyzing blow to the throat followed by severe lacerations of the jugular. And lastly, tickle the death. An excessive hemorrhage. In a layman's language, he didn't know what hit him. Oh, he knew. But he didn't have time to think about it. Always gotta have the last word, don't you, Doc? You staying here tonight, Andy? Nah, I gotta get back and check on Otis. Windows, but, uh, I'll be back bright and early in the morning. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. I think they just became Green Lanterns. When I close this case. Yes, I'm sure they are. Good night, Andy. Don't get hurt. Yeah, don't do me any favors or anything. Good night, Doctor. You smug jackass. I'd hate him if he wasn't so damn attractive. You know, I think we'd better let you get some sleep. Oh, oh come on, just one more game of Pictionary. Mutual protection. You know, one night, a storm blew the wires down, put the lights out, and I went out the next day and bought a half a dozen of these things. You better take one with you, Dale. Oh, Here, it's called a flashlight. It's the latest craze. 
We'll go across the hall now. Are you sure there's nothing else you need? Oh, no. Quite well, they sure. can't go to bed yet. They haven't given each other makeovers yet. You just sing out, and two strong women will come to your rescue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing will bother us. Not with Andy on the job. No. Well, good night. Good, good night. 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 Good See you Don't morning. worry. Everything will be all no, right. Be good night. Good night. Okay, which one you bet on to die first? He took lessons in hiding for the visually impaired. That was a thorough check in the room. No need to look behind a door or anything. Oh, I don't think I'll sleep tonight. Me neither. All I can see is poor Mark Fleming. I'll be counting us. dead Mark Fleming's doing chin-ups over a fence instead of sheep jumping. Died, their eyes closed is in sleep. Don't think about it. I'll bet you're thinking about it. No, I was thinking of my poor husband sleeping in jail tonight. That and fat-free Triscuits. Oh, Judy, I love him so much. Well, I covered this place from top to bottom. Time to call it a night. You know, if this movie didn't have moments like this to pad out the film, it would only be about a half hour long. Oh, I say, what the sticky wicket was that all about? Yeah, sure enough, this is the only way to go bullfrogging. Oh, he went out bullfrogging without me. Gonna make me a nice, tasty part of them broke legs. Well, he's not gonna get them all without me, he ain't. Here's the most casual homicidal thief you'll ever see in a film. No sense of urgency. This is a killer who takes his time. A landline? Who even uses one of these anymore? You had an upgrade, and this will teach you to do so. No need to use my claws, I have a tool for every job. Yoink! Well, I got that done at least. Oh, gee, stairs. I forgot about stairs. What do I do in this situation again? Oh, boy, I hope no one's watching me. Uh, whoopsie daisy! Hey, easier than I thought. Nope, that's Hagatha Christie's room. What's this I spy? A new location? Don't mind if I do. She thinks she's so clever hiding her Christmas presents in here, but I'll find them. This would be a really neat place for Norman Bates to put his mother in a rocking chair. You know, the one thing I love about the bat is his absolute stealthy approach to everything he does. Sounds like Judy's got a man over. No phones allowed. Sounds like Lizzie has What's a man over. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't even believe that. I kind of fell half asleep. For a moment, I thought it was something from a dream. It's somewhere in the house. Yes, on the floor above. Not directly over us. Probably a room overlooking the drive. Probably across the street. Sure glad I paid extra to put the muzzle on this chisel. Yeah. 
God, I can only hope she's dead. Should we call Miss Van Gorder? Sure, there's no sure, way the there, phones could ever be out. Help it, Herod. Oh, besides, we don't want her to think we're a couple of hysterical women. There's I absolutely know. nothing funny about us whatsoever. One night. Dale, you're not going out in that hall. I want to know what's happening up there. But Lieutenant Anderson said if we stayed behind our locked doors, we'd be safe. Vic isn't safe locked up in that jail. You know what they'll do to him in prison. What is in this house? Mark Fleming seemed to think it was. Maybe that's what somebody's looking for. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't you hear that awful noise up there? Now, Lizzie, Lizzie, you've just got to stay awake. Lizzie, you are the laziest man on Mars. And the Mars. outside phone wires have been cut, and we can't get help. Where's that policeman? Oh, I don't know. Think Something of Dunkin' Donuts open across the street. Now go on, get on your robe. Oh, Dale, please don't go up there. I've got to. Think what it could mean to Vic. Now, you stay here. Oh, no. If you go, I go. After all, fun comes in pairs. I hope there's no one out here to maul a couple perky young women. You stay here. Listen, no. I'm the leggy you one. You stay alone. here. Here, I'm going to see what it is. Oh, please let me go with you, Dale. Will you warn me if anyone comes? I'll give you a moment. Warn me if anyone comes. If you see the bat, make a gurgling death sound. Don't you dare look at my butt on my way up. I could have ascended those stairs faster than she would. Oh boy, here I go. Well, here's to no regrets. Snossages? Everybody learned hiding from Scooby-Doo cartoons. Let's tango! A lady? Wow, wow, woo! Judy, look out, he's gonna pet you to death! Oh, what the frig, lady? I didn't even do anything! Jeez! Judy, no! How could he just palm you to death like that? Yes, give her to me. I'll hold her till she wakes the hell back up from being palmed to death. <laughs> Poor little wabbit. I made it just in time. Oh, crap. I can tell by the palm sweat in her forehead the bat was here. Yes, the bat. He caught her at the head of the stairs. He did a we few victory killing the laps before he left. Out of the room. I hurled that after him. Oh, I that's what hit me in the face. Way. I mean... I'm going to cover this place from attic to basement, you said. Well, what were you covering when that poor child was murdered? Where were you? I saw a man outside in the grounds. You know, man is really elusive in these parts. I heard him in among the trees, and so I followed the sound of him as far as the brook down near the back road. And then I lost her. Oh, just like a man to lose I a man. I my own life than have this happen to Judy. But I told you to stay in your rooms and lock your doors and stay there. What was she doing at the head of those stairs? That was my fault. No kidding. There was a strange noise. Heavy pounding in one of the rooms on the third floor. We all heard it. I wanted to see what it was. I thought it might have been a beat poetry session. I made her stay on the balcony. What about your new butler? Oh, well, he's in his room, I suppose. I... Oh, Mrs. Patterson. Why yes. are you dressed like such Did a you know tramp? What here? No, sir, but I heard the screams. I went to call Warner. We have rooms on the same floor. But he wasn't in his What room. is that smell? His bed hasn't been slept. Oh, Judy evacuated. If Mrs. Patterson heard the screams, Warner could certainly hear them. You're quite right, sir. I heard them. Right on cue, like any good stage play. And where were you? 
Outside, in the grounds? Miss Holland has been murdered. No. Oh, so you're surprised. Shocked. Well, I've seen better performances. Thinking you could play the King of Siam. I remember you now. Your name's not Warner. You're Coco Chanel. I've got a circular in my office with your picture on it. The Chicago police not so long ago were hunting for you in connection with the robbery. You're right again, sir. And they found me and they tried me and I proved my innocence and I was acquitted. Because the glove didn't that have fitted. break. Where were you when this child was killed? I told you before, sir. Outside. What were you doing there? I was following you. I saw you I saw a bullfrog and, and I really wanted to help you out. Someone. I thought you might need some help. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. I followed your flashlight down through the trees. Then it disappeared. And then suddenly, as I was staring out into the darkness, I was struck by something on the back of the head. The next thing I knew, I was lying on the ground. I realized I'd been knocked out. Then I narrated to myself, oh, knocked. bloody hell, I've been but knocked out again. With your mask still on your face. You were hit here in this house with this poker as you were rushing down those stairs after that child. Oh, killed. no, sir, you can't pin this on me. I'm, I'm not, not some sort of donkey to can pin things on. I couldn't kill. I won't take the rap for this. Oh, hi. Uh, I heard you needed somebody to break up the scene, so I decided to show up. Another one petted to death. How many more? Well, Doctor. We have another case for the county coroner. You see, the bat came back. He couldn't stay away. He killed here again Why the very you same come day. Back, doctor? Well, I, I had an accident. Had to change my uh, pants. About a mile down the road. The right rear wheel of my car came off and I plunged into the ditch. This was the nearest house, so I came here to call for help. So, um, uh, help? I thought I'd find you around, Andy. What's this? Hair gel? Physician, heal thyself. You must have been hit by something on the back of your head. I told you I had an accident. Well, that so explains the stains. So you did. I could be wrong. Maybe you're both the bat. I'm not. Maybe all three of us are the bat. Right, dear. Let's start a new chapter. You know, I'm glad you decided okay, to work for me so after Judy's grisly murder. Lieutenant Anderson grilled us and ransacked the house from top to bottom. Warner was not placed under arrest, but his every move was watched. She At thinks night, I'm actually writing down what she's saying. Wait till she sees this amazingly house, funny drawing I'm doing. Left us alone. And on one of those nights, you get her mustache just without right. telling Lizzie or anyone else, I pursued a secret investigation of my own. The investigation I call man. It was in an empty room on the third floor where we kept our trunks. Christmas and presents things. and all that. That seems out of the ordinary. All right, Bat, come out of there. Hmm, wait, what's... Is that the handle for the toilet? Well, don't that just beat all? I could have had a V8! Surprise! It was me all along! I guess they were right. It does look a lot better without the family pictures cluttering this place up. Now, it was in the middle of my narration that I noticed that Warner was heading down the stairs. I know this because I was on the third floor. Ooh. 
Leaving hat? Check. I'm out of here. I'm a mystery writer. Why can't I figure this out? In short, leave my savings to the Buddy Epson Society. Sign the back. <laughs> Don't think it's a bat, but it's actually a clipboard. <laughs> people think that I'm the bat. You know, we're not so different, you and I. Oh, am I starting too early on this? Ambush? And clever as you are, you're not smart enough to do that. Just like I'm not smart enough to be shooting you during the middle of my narration. I want you to hear every word I had to say before you die. And when you're dead with that sign pinned on your chest, I'm going to collect it and live happily ever after. He destroyed himself. How true that will be. Oh, goodbye, Bat. Here's a serum that will heal you whether you're rabid or not. That line is terrible! Arr! What is it with grown men in the 1950s that made them fight like they were on the high school wrestling team? It looks like he paid the price for narrating when he should have shot him. Oh hell, no one's gonna believe that one. Ah, uh, he, he fell on a bullet. I don't know. Give my mustache to John Waters. Oh, why can't I get online? Da -na 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 -na. I should make Lizzie live in here. It's got all the room she needs. Oh, the safe operates the wall. I should have seen that coming. The walls are closing in on me. Okay, get out of here. Something's wrong. Her servant senses are tingling. Something's wrong. Gotta put on these slippers and cover up my Miss Cornies. Miss Cornelia! Fret, fret, fret. Fret, fret, fret. Fret, fret, fret. Miss Cornelia! Whoop, 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 whoop. Now, where would she be going at this time of night? But I'm sure if I wander around, I'll find the rest of the plot. Well, land's sake. Well, locking this door has never stopped anybody from coming in before, but better keep doing it. I never. Oh. Mr. Davenport. Mr. Davenport. Oh, I Fine thing. The door oh, leave me alone, off, lady. I tried reading one of Miss Cornelia's books Turn and it Lieutenant just bored Anderson me to death. About this. Come on, wake up. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I don't know. My head hurts. My whole body's numb. Here, here, take a sip of this. Yeah, hey, booze cures everything. I'll be back in a minute. Ah, another successful night on the prowl. Time to get back in. Oh, crap. I forgot my keys. Hurry, will you? It's Lizzie. 
That was a I'm quick response. Was her bed directly next to the door? Anywhere, and something's happened to the policeman. I don't know what. Get Warner. Bring him to the drawing room. Tell him we need him. What am I, my Warner's keeper? Are you all right now? Yeah, I'll be all right in a minute. No, I was just practicing yeah, my Jimmy Stewart now. face. Took a drink of wine from that decanter there. Miss Van Gorder told me to help myself. She wouldn't put nothing in it? Well, somebody did. Somebody who knew I was on duty here. Then it was somebody that got Miss Van Gorder. I can't find her anywhere. Upstairs, downstairs, or in the basement. I told the housekeeper to get warmer. Lieutenant Anderson will want to know about this. He's the only Hello. other policeman in the county, this after is all. This at the Oaks. We've got trouble here. Well, for one thing, I was drugged. Yeah. But I must have been knocked out because a maid tells me Miss Van Gorder is missing. <laughs> Well, you better call Anderson and let him know. He's not at home. Well, where is he? The brothel? I don't know. What case? Dr. Wells. What else did they tell you about it? Oh, hurry, will you? We've got to find Miss Cornelia. I'm right here, you stupid. What do okay. I pay you for? Lieutenant Anderson is out on a case. Dr. <laughs> Wells was found dead in a room next to his garage, murdered. Dr. Wells? There's something queer about the killing of Wells, but... I just thought he was a snappy him. dresser. Lizzie, one isn't in his room. There's no sign of him anywhere. And I was supposed to keep an eye on that guy. Where's Miss Cornelia? That's what I want to know. If she did dies, she who's going to pay me? And the bolt were off of the front door? I certainly did. Well, maybe Miss Van Gorder went outside. Oh, she never would. We better look. I can't take another minute in this stupid scene. Well, she's long since suffocated by now. By the time they find her, she'll have a sign on her reading, I blame Lizzie for all of this. Miss Cornelia! Oh, Miss Van Miss Gorder! Miss Cornelia! Miss Cornelia! Miss Van Gorder! Look! There's a light in that room on the third floor. Were you up there tonight? Well, of course I was, but I turned the lights out before I came downstairs. After Miss all, Cornelia, I'm quite concerned about the city of the electric bill. That's why we're going to look first. Come on! I'm sure she's not in any sort of danger. Let's do this in a slow, thought-out, methodical way. The candle back. Panels? A oh, panels have always confused me. Which panel did you say, Miss Van Gorder? I said, I, 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 I. Miss Van Gorder, which panel? We couldn't hear you. She said, strike it. What difference does it make which panel? Strike them all. One potato, two potato, three potato, four, five potato, six potato, seven potato, more. Oh, it's all right now. Let it's Auntie right. Lizzie nurse you back Lizzie to health. Here. What light yonder window break? I be the bat. And Juliet be the sun. Yes, much better. We'll take you to your room. Oh, no, you won't. I'm going to stay right here. I, I'm quite all right. Oh, how blessed it is to breathe without an effort, you know? No one knows how sweet the air can taste until someone shuts it off for a moment. I'd even be that willing to taste the air in New Jersey. Like a box. When the mantelpiece closed, it seemed like all the air was drawn out of it. Look, Whoa, there we're about to lose the inspector. Here he goes. I can open it from in here. There's a control panel behind this blueprint. Guess you weren't clever like enough to find that one, were you, Miss Corny? Once the door is open, you can keep it that way. I believe that the fireplace in this other room opens the same way. I also believe the wardrobe leads to a magical fantasy yeah, land does. with a witch and a lion. For pity's sake. I tried to find this, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, it was back at this blueprint here. Well, yeah, it's, it's quite a setup. Oh. Too bad we can't open that safe in the same way. Take an expert to crack this box or a shot of nitro. Well, maybe 
Maybe that's what the bat had in mind. He was going to silently blow the safe like he silently tried to get through the wall. Warner has disappeared. And Dr. Wells has been murdered. Dr. Wells? Lieutenant Anderson's on that case right now. Well, does he know what happened here tonight? They got word to him. He'll be here any minute. Hey, way to go, Spruce Bark Beetles. You're really good at starting fires. Got the marshmallows right here. Damn, I love my work. The garage is on fire. We didn't start the fire. It was always burning while the world was turning. Where you going? To report the fire. Where you just stay right here. But Miss Angora, the garage. Oh, that's Warner's car in there. It's not like it's ours. See that fire was set to get us out of the house. Out of the house. Were you talking about the? Yes, yes, I'm talking about the bat. Now that the lights are out, he'll think his trick has worked, and we've gone. He'll be here any minute. Well, so and then we'll throw him a surprise I party like he's never had one before. First, and he'll kill again if we're in his way. We've got to be as clever as he is. we got to put a sheet over our head or something. Hide in the corner. I don't know. I think this is the right... R no? This smells like farts in here. I'm going to enter in the other way. Yeah, better to leave that alone. Wow, look at Warner's car go. Quick, turn out the light in this enclosed room you can't see into. Boy, I tell you, it's nothing like playing a game of hide and seek by a roaring fire. Let's see. I better close the door just in case. What I do by myself is private. Squeak! Squeak! But you'll be safer downstairs. I'll take care of you. Well, the others can go, but I'm going to stay right here. All right, but get out of sight. Just let me move this incredibly silent luggage real quick. Got you now, Bat. This is bulletproof luggage. Ah, damn it, my lousy shot. Let's face it, ladies, and get it over with. That you could use the bulletproof luggage trick on me, eh? Died, but I'll have to deny you that pleasure. This would make a good scene for your book, Miss Van Gorda. But I'm afraid you'll never write it. Not that anybody would ever read it. That is Warner. I could tell. You misjudged me, Miss Ellen. What? Wrong, ladies. I'm Coco Chanel. I don't like being a murder suspect, Miss Van Gorder. I was headed for a plane, but halfway to the airport, I changed my mind and came back. Sure hope Ingrid Laszlo yeah, isn't waiting there for me. Why, it's Lieutenant Anderson. Anderson! That's me. Ugh. Yes, it was Anderson. He discovered the secret of the hidden room and was waiting to get into it and open up the safe. Of course, he didn't have the combination. We That's in a completely money. different house. A little over a million in tens and twenties and hundreds. And surprisingly, a bunch of singles. <laughs> Good old Andy. With all his ill-gotten gains invested in bank stock, it's rather a clever way to hide stolen money. In the open, as it were. And a cereal so box in the cupboard the whole time. But don't try it. I'm looking at you, Samantha. No matter how clever you are, you can't hide murder. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Wow! Well, that's it, Dale. That's the end. That's all, folks. Well, thank you all for joining me for this special Halloween riff. Hope you all enjoyed it. 
see you in the next video, everybody! This is my Canadian Boomstick! Oh, hit the car! Oh, that's not good. Zombie Bob Ross! <laughs> is there such thing as gaining experience for killing?